The 3B Scientific family has grown over the past 18 months. About a year and a half ago, um, Cardionics joined our 3B family. Cardionics has an awesome line of auscultation simulation products. And a little less than a year ago, it was actually at IMSH in San Diego last January, um, I simulate joined the 3B family and we're excited to have both of those companies um, part of our family. I've got some colleagues with me today. Uh, here in Atlanta with me is our marketing manager, uh, Manuel Mule. He'll be kind of guiding us through uh, the session today and keeping an eye on chat. Um, got Dr. Bill Boudreau coming to us from beautiful Galveston, Texas. And um, Chris Kroboff is coming to us from the iSimulate team. So uh, I appreciate all of them uh, being here with us. And again, thank you everyone um, for your time today and for taking part in this, um, in this learning lab. With that, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Bill Boudreau, who's gonna take you through a um, COVID-19 examination uh, session, which I think you'll be really excited to see. So it's all yours, Bill. Thank you, Tim. Uh, welcome to sunny Galveston, Texas, where I'm coming to you from my kitchen table. That's so glad to see you here today um, in this uh, new world that we're all having to deal with and a new way to educate our students. Today, I'm going to be talking uh, about COVID-19 patient examination, and we're gonna do a cardionics auscultation demonstration with their simulators to demonstrate how uh, you can uh, teach in this virtual world we're having to deal with today. My name is Bill Boudreau, and to give you a quick review of my career uh, to lend some credibility to what I, I have to say, I've been a RN for 20 years, 20 years in the ICUER, uh, 10 years as a flight nurse, and I taught nursing for 20 years during that time. And my last seven years of my career, I taught in the School of Medicine. During that time, I was also a police officer for 20 years, retired as a master peace officer. Uh, 10 years EMS, 30 plus years Rotarian, 10 years throat cancer survivor this year. Thank you. I, I am blessed. And forever Marine. I'm reminded of that today on, on Veterans Day. In fact, uh, I have Sam behind me is appropriately clad in my dress, uh, my, my, my dress hat. My last uh, position was in the Office of Clinical Simulation. We were responsible for recruiting, training, and monitoring the standardized patient program as well as providing clinical simulation for about a thousand students annually. We had a big program. We had 16 simulation rooms we could run. Um, we, we could draw from a large pool of standardized patients that represented the demographics required for the specific cases. Now we had a big program and we had a lot of simulators. But um, the cardionic simulators can be scaled up or down depending on your needs, the size of your program or your budget. Each medical school class that we taught had about 240 students. Plus we had physicians, assistant students, nurse practitioner students, physical therapy students, occupational therapy students, as well as residents from several graduate school departments. And each of these groups had unique training requirements that. I said might involve up to 16 patients and simulations in a single exercise. I could train and monitor standardized patient performance and check on quality, but I was unable to produce patients with symptoms. I just can't produce 16 patients with asthma when it's needed for the scenario. But with the cardionic student auscultation mannequin or SAM, as well as eye and ear examination task trainers, I could demonstrate the symptoms discussed in the patient encounters that we were learning. Uh, what can you do if you have a smaller program? Limited access to simulators or standardized patients, or distance learning or reinforcement of didactics learned in the classroom can be accomplished by using the same online program software, which can be customized for your individual program needs. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about SAM online in a little bit. Each SAM is programmed with hundreds of sounds that can be used on on-site 
for learning and evaluation from a lab, a classroom, auditorium, regardless of your program size. Oh, wow, COVID-19, the, the coronavirus SARS is an insidious virus like anything I've ever seen in my experience. And while I'm not on the front lines anymore, I can do my part by training medical professionals in the recognition of its signs and symptoms. And with these products, help train people around the world to recognize those signs and symptoms. And I am proud of the fact that many of the thousands of students that I ha have helped train, helped train are actively engaged in this fight. Let's talk about a typical patient scenario. Um, in a large group exercise, I, I, may, I may have a, a, a meeting room or a small auditorium full of students. And the student will, can watch a video and identify the signs and symptoms. In addition, at each SAM, as part of the software, the, the video for the particular symptom that we're, we're demonstrating that day will come up. And it'll be a short two to three minute uh, uh, scenario with the patient presentation. And then the patient will, uh, the student will turn to the patient or the mannequin in this case, and examine the patient to, to verify their, their differential diagnosis. In the scenario we're about to see, uh, uh, she turns to a live patient asking permission to listen her heart and lungs. She examines the patient using a cardiac simscope, a bionic simulator, or turn to the student auscultation mannequin to repeat her exam, finding those sounds appropriate, in this case for COVID-19, confirming her suspected differential diagnosis based on the symptoms presented. The student will then summarize their findings and let the patient know what to expect next. Um, at the end of this presentation, I will, I will take questions or you, in the chat feature you see at the bottom of your screen, you can type your questions in there. So in this visit, Ms. Smithers is a 72 year old female who's been experiencing a dry cough, fever and chills, shortness of breath, especially upon an exertion. She also has some sharp stabbing chest pain on both sides of her chest that increases with deep breaths. She noticed a gradual onset a few days after she thought she was getting over a cold. She has had little appetite because things just don't taste right. The patient has no significant medical history and has never had this problem previously. With cooperation, my friends at Cardionics and 3B, and we've written and, and uh, produced a video designed to assist in the recognition of the signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Please note, we produced this actually in early March 2020 at the start of the pandemic, uh, but still due to the shortage of PPE, we filmed these scenarios without PPE, but uh, at appropriate distance. If you'll take a minute to watch this video. Hi, Ms. Smithers. My name is Avery Gallagher. I'm a medical student. What brings you in today? I just can't get rid of this cough and fever. Can you tell me more about that? Well, I thought I was getting over a cold, and then I started coughing and running a fever. I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling well. Can you tell me how old you are? I'm 72 years young. And in the past two weeks, have you had exposure to anyone with COVID-19? No. Have you lived in or visited anywhere where COVID-19 is prevalent? No, um, I live alone and I don't get out too much except to go to the grocery store and you have to get there pretty early if you wanna get toilet paper. Do you have any of the following conditions? Chronic lung disease? No. Moderate to severe asthma? No. Smoking? Yes, I used to smoke, but I quit when it got so expensive. For how did you smoke and when did you quit? Well, I started when I was 16 and I smoked a pack a day every day until I was 66 and I quit cold turkey. Good for you. Do you have any serious heart conditions? No. Anything that could weaken your immune system like cancer treatments, uh, prolonged steroid use, transplant, HIV or AIDS? No. Um, any history of significant weight loss? No. 
any chronic conditions like diabetes, renal failure, or liver disease? No. Are you having any shortness of breath or difficulty breathing? Well, sometimes when I'm talking, I have to stop and take a breath just to finish a sentence. <laughs> Excuse me. In the past two weeks, have you worked at or volunteered at any health care facilities like a hospital, clinic, or nursing home? Well, I'm retired now, but I do like to go and visit my husband, Paul, at the Shady Acres Nursing Home as often as I can. And how is he doing? Well, he's had a cold for a while, and I think it's going around. Tell me more about your cough. Are you coughing anything up? No, it's just a dry, persistent cough. Are you having any pain? Yes. Sometimes when I take a deep breath, it hurts in my chest. Can you describe that pain for me? Oh, it's sort of a sharp, stabbing pain. Does anything make the pain better? Not really. I did take some ibuprofen, and that helped a little bit. Does anything make the pain worse? When I take deep breaths. <laughs> Excuse me. And does the pain radiate anywhere? No. On a scale from zero to 10, with zero being no pain and 10 being excruciating, how would you rate it? I'd have to say it's about an eight. Do you have any idea what could be going on? Well, that's why I'm here. This thing just has me drained. I don't have any appetite and no food tastes right. Is it okay if I listen to your heart and lungs? Of course. Following the uh, examination, uh, the, pay, uh, the, the student uh, has to, needs to follow up and, and give Ms. Smithers her, her uh, evaluation summation. Um, and uh, you can read it here and watch the video. Ms. Smithers, your persistent non-productive cough, fever, lack of energy and appetite are concerning. I will need to discuss your symptoms with my attending, but for now, we will need you to put on a mask and isolate you pending further test. This will include a reagent test for COVID-19, and I'm going to suggest chest x-rays and a CT scan. Is there someone you would like us to call to be with you? Do you have any questions? All right, this was an example of the videos that uh, we provide along with the, the, the student auscultation mannequins or the SAMs. Um, they are approximately 22 videos, uh, 22 male, 22 female vi uh, videos of different, um, uh, different uh, presentations of different pathologies. Um, so that's one way uh, to train your students. Another way to train your students is to use the bionic uh, hybrid simulator. Uh, where the, the standardized patient can, if you have a standardized patient available, they can wear the simulator and the simulator can produce the same quality sounds that we have in the student auscultation mannequin. You can also use the SIM scope in your examination uh, to simulate the same sounds or my favorite is, the, is Sam, my, my buddy here. He's kept me, uh, kept me company through some uh, long quarantines. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to add realism to your, your classroom experience, these are the guys you need to contact. Uh, I'm not a salesman. I know the product and I can teach and I, I'm a lifelong educator, but these are the guys you need to contact regarding uh, any of these products. But I think I can take questions now. If you want to put them in the chat box. Well, so far I have no questions, just uh, congratulations and thank you for, for, for my service. Uh, I thank you all out there for your service too. Um, it's, it's, it's long due recognition. So how about any questions about um, student learning in the age of COVID?
All right. If not, uh, Tim's going to wrap up at the end. And uh, thank you guys for your, your very kind attention and good luck in, in your future educational experiences. Thanks, Bill. Great. I am just going to quickly um, go through Sam online. Manny and Bill, can you um, can you see my screen? I can. Uh, you haven't started the show yet. Okay. How's that? Is that? Yeah. Can you see? Great. Great. Um, so I'm going to give you just a quick um, overview of Sam online. Um, Bill referenced it in uh, his awesome presentation. Um, Sam Online is our remote learning solution for auscultation training. Um, it's you know allows um, students to have 24/7 access to a platform with over 80 um, 80 so simulated sounds, lesson guides, um, tools to outline the learning process. Um, Sam Online can be um, Schools can purchase it as a as a site license, but it comes a one year access comes with um, the purchase of a Sam 3G, Sam 2, or a Pat um, a Pat mannequin. So I'm just gonna um, just give you a quick quick overview of um, of the platform. So just bear with me while I while I load that up. So here you see the um, the SAM platform. Um, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to hear the sounds um, because they're best heard with headphones on. Um, but I'll assure you that the sounds will be coming through loud and clear when you, uh, um, you know, when you do it on your own. Tim, a uh, quick um, interruption. You, we, we are still seeing the PowerPoint presentation. Oh yeah, oh, thanks, Manny. My apologies. How about now? Yeah, this looks better. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Um, so this is this is the um, the logon screen that you'll see for Sam online. Really, most of the work is going to be done in the exam room, and. What can what you can do is choose from any of any of these of the eighty sounds in the library, and we can just start with a um, a normal heart heart sound, and I'm hearing that sound, um, but you can see the the waveforms coming through. Um, there are you can listen in four regions of the heart by just moving the stethoscope stethoscope sorry from the aortic to pul pulmonic the tricuspid to the mitral area. If you wanna compare um, sounds, you can click on the compare and choose another sound and that sound will play. Um, you also have the ability, uh, if you don't want to see the actual regions of the heart, you can hide those. The next feature is the lessons, which can be um, opened up two different ways. You can click on the lesson over here in the sound, and that's going to launch. Uh, in this case, we were listening to mitral valve prolapse, and it's going to launch the lesson for mitral valve pro prolapse. Um, you can see the, um, the detail contained within the lesson, um, discussion, listening technique, patient positioning, maneuvers. And then the other way you can access the lessons is just click on that drop down arrow and you'll see for each of the 80 sounds, there's a corresponding lesson. So just great in-depth uh, content to help 
master the skills for all the various sounds. And then from a uh, teaching perspective, uh, the rest of SAM Online um, focuses on assignments. I, I don't have any in here, but a, um, a teacher or professor could build assignments for students to um, accomplish. Um, quizzes, um, there's quizzes built in to SAM Online, but you can also customize by just clicking on this edit screen and you can customize quizzes. You can create your own test bank for, uh, for, for students to you know, just track mastery of skills. You can assign an overall course plan um, through assignments and quizzes and then tests. And then Sorry. And then um, the last sections are really more administrative with how um, a student would uh, and a teacher would work to, bu to build the, the actual class. The teacher can build any number of classes. It could be auscultation one, auscultation two, auscultation three, and add in students, um, again, assigning the classes. And then the st students can be, uh, student roster could be imported from an Excel spreadsheet uh, to, bu to build that, um, that database. So um, that's kind of a quick overview of um, SAM Online, but we're really, we're really excited to have this, especially in the current environment. Uh, again, it, it, it's meant to supplement uh, in-person learning. Uh, it's, it's, again, um, a platform that comes free for a year with the purchase of our um, SAM 3G, SAM 2, and PAT uh, pedestal mannequins. And if anyone would like any more information on this or you'd like to try it, um, by all means, uh, reach out to me and happy to share, uh, share additional information um, with you. Yeah, before you move on, um, I, yeah. I I was privileged to work on this. Can you go back to the exam room a minute? Yeah, I, yeah. For, for the for. clinicians out there, if you go down to the torso, maybe let's see, you got mitral, how about uh, mitral valve regurgitation right next to that? Yeah. Mild or marked? Uh, either one. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if we can actually pull up the sounds in, in your slide presentation, but I wanted to make a point here because over the 80 sounds, if, uh, they all sound differently depending on where you're listening. For example, you have the stethoscope over the aortic area right now, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I, my students are always astounded that, especially in something like my, mitral valve regurgitation, your heart sounds almost normal in both aortic and pulmonic. Um, so if you did a cursory exam, which we all get in our physician's office, unfortunately, uh, it, it, they're very, uh, very likely to miss something like mitral valve regurgitation because they didn't listen to all five spots. So it's pretty dramatic for my students in an auditorium when I, I go through the sounds and move from aortic pulmonic by cuspin down to mitral, that you really only hear the murmur in the mitral area and a little bit in tricuspid area. If you didn't examine all four spots, you would completely miss it. That's why probably one out of every five young women have mitral valve prolapse and they don't know it. So, but this, this uh, product is discriminant enough to provide that difference between the sounds in the different areas. So, I mean, that's one, one reason why I started using your products was because of the discrimination in sounds. So that's all I had to say. Awesome, Bill, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you also have ultrasound on many of your sounds. You have an ultrasound screen that uh, is really unique. Um, unless, yeah, unless you run an ultrasound trainer, um, many of your sounds have an accompanying ultrasound picture. Great, Bill, thank you so much. Um, with that, 
I'm going to conclude this portion of the um, of the session, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague Chris. Chris, right. grab and take the screen share. There you go. Got it. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Good to go. Sounds good. The virtual meeting world where you only can go off of like uh, <laughs> yeah, head right. affirmative, Chris, <laughs> or a chat box. Um, all right. So my name is Chris Kroboth. I'm the clinical education manager for I Simulate in the U.S. Um, we're going to hit on a couple things. We're going to hit on um, some of the version 10 features we released uh, about a month and a half ago, and we're going to um, go through some virtual education opportunities our software or our simulation systems can help with. Um, both in pre-coursework preparation, online quizzing, um, and then also how to uh, facilitate virtual simulations um, effectively with our equipment. And I also happen to see in the uh, group of attendees, one of my uh, good friends from the UCLA area, uh, Katie O'Connor's on there. So you're gonna see her picture in one of these two. So that's a shout out to her. And uh, Dr. Bill, thank you for your service and happy Veterans Day. So we'll run through our system here real quick. Um, if you haven't seen our stuff before, had the awesome opportunity to use it yet, we use iPads um, as the foundation for a simulation platform. You'll see there in the middle, um, we have a 12.9 inch iPad in a hard case bag and it's representing a life pack 15 in this instance. To the left of it on the stand is the control mechanism and I'll show you some close up pictures here in a second. And they're connected over Wi-Fi. So the controller iPad is in the hands or remotely now of the facilitator. And the students or end, end user and learner is utilizing the 12.9 inch iPad to interact like they would with any of the bedside monitors. And we'll go through some of the ones we have. Top right corner, we have a camera setup. So we actually utilize another iPad to film the scenario that's actively going on. It overlays the waveforms and vital signs that are occurring throughout the scenario. So that it gives you contextual reality when you're doing your debrief on what waves and vital signs were happening when that action was occurring during the video. So it helps um, a lot of people with uh, understanding where their mind was or where they were in their thought process and also giving them some relatability to, oh man, I didn't recognize that VFib happened two minutes prior to me actually recognizing it. Uh, down here in the front, you'll see a chart. It's like an EPR, so it's another iPad. It's where all the diagnostics, like the MRIs, CAT scans, which are all built into our system, lab work, 12 leads, you know, go to. To the right over there in the case is our CPR module. So we actually have a CPR feedback system you can utilize on any mannequin. Um, and it overlays into the 12.9-inch into the monitor, gives you artifact, and gives you an AHA-compliant CPR log when it's over. Uh, and then the little iPod right there, the iPhone, that's actually an Engage app. So we've uh, come up with a creative way to download a free app to iPhones, um, Androids, that students, while watching the streamed live version of the scenario, they actually can make comments um, and become part of the debrief as well. And really the intent of it is if you let people sit for more than about two minutes in 2020, they're going to start going to social media. So this re-engages them or engages them in the scenario set and puts more um, functionality or productivity in what they're doing. So that's the core base of our system. Um, here's some of the monitors we have. So GE Carescape, Welch Island Vital Connects, Philips, um, Teleview 800, CAP35. We have generic ones built in as well. So um, you don't have to be tied to one specific brand. You can just use generic ones for learning. And then we have the Schiller 7. For defibrillators, we have the Zolex Life Pack 15, Core Pulse 3, um, Core Pulse 3 Gen 4. Put this chat box down to the side. Life Pack 1000 and Core Pulse 1, Core Pulse AED, Pro Pack MD. Um, both the MRX in hospital and pre hospital setups, and Life Pack 20 Zolar, and our generic defibrillator screen. Uh, generic AED and uh, the Schiller Defib Guard Defib Guard uh, Touch Seven. Uh, we also have um, a Revell ventilator built in and a Zol EMV Plus ventilator with more of all of the monitors, defibrillators, defibrillators, and ventilators releasing over the next um, couple months. Um, the one key feature to uh, version ten that we released is the remote control module. Currently, our system comes with a local router that doesn't require internet. So 
It's a, if you are able to connect to the same network um, locally, you can run your SIM. So facilitator connects to the monitor, monitor the camera, et cetera, all over one local network. We were able to release an option now where we utilize the internet um, to go in, establish a connectivity point, um, kind of like a Zoom room. And now I could be sitting here in Virginia and I could, uh, Katie could have a monitor set up over in UCLA and I could be controlling her iPad over there, which is awesome if you want to, if your students have access to iPads, they can now have access to this system and you can do remote um, skills verification and also scenarios, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Here's what it would look like on the left side is the screen of our uh, what our monitor setup is. The monitor would kick in. You have four digit code. So if you're a user of reality, this is what you would see. Um, four digit code pops up on the right side would be the facilitator screen. The student tells you in this case, SKKS, you click it, link in and you're rolling. The other beauty of our system is in terms of availability of equipment, um, we give access to anybody to our facilitator. So all of your instructors, adjunct faculty, medical director, um, students, I teach a paramedic program where our students halfway through the curriculum start building scenarios and doing teach back with them. It puts more bite into the clinical rotations that they're required to do because now they come back, they develop a lot of those cases they saw over the weekend and they link into a monitor and they run it through with their um, fellow students to include full uh, summative scenarios. So you can just go on the app store right now, search I simulate reality, download the app, and it gives you access. And this is the facilitator screen. So I did a quick little screen recording video of how you can go through some of the features over 78 different waves. You can trend, it has a checklist built in. You can incorporate your own media sounds. Um, so that was just a quick run through what it does. Now I'm gonna hit on the ways you can maximize virtual simulation education um, with our equipment. So being that it's iPad based, um, it iPads clearly were designed for optimal education environment. So I'm gonna show you a couple options here and I'll show you the how to behind it. These are just screen recordings. So what we did was we utilized the system and some of the features like jumping to next. So you can build boxes where it'll jump to the next box after a certain time interval. In this case, this is for an ECG quiz. So as an instructor could record this, turn it into an MP4, put it on my LMS, or we could do like we're doing here. I could link in my iPad, my monitor iPad to the Zoom meeting, share my screen, sit back and let the students answer the questions. But the goal here, it gives them a pre-quiz um, pre pop-up and then it just starts rolling. So we're teaching auditory cueing, we're teaching rhythmicity and we're teaching them to recognize and acknowledge changes or trends. So this person will stay in sinus tack here for I think it's uh, 20 seconds and then they'll jump into an SVT. But as an instructor, I could just be kicked back right now, allowing them to run through this system. So here the person jumps into an SVT, an AV nodal reentry tachycardia and the students would have on their sheet that as it's going through it's different algorithms. And if you were starting to fall asleep, I'm pretty sure the QRS volume here has woken you up. So switch to the next one. Um, I'm a huge fan of case-based learning and relatability, trying to maximize what it means to the learner. And as we know in adult education, that's, that's really the hardest point. You can stand up front and lecture all day long and talk to them about things. They wanna know what it means to them in their world. So um, we do pre-course work. We do prep work, we flip our classrooms, all that, all the good buzzwords that are going around now. One way to do that, and this is one thing we've done on social media through COVID to help people kind of stay in the game, is build cases, short cases that um, give some background, give a monitor feed, give some values, and then ask questions throughout. So what you're doing is you're keeping the person engaged. So here's a quick um, preface of what's going to happen 62 degrees Fahrenheit sunny March day six total questions within the case so it starts to run says mother states she doesn't have any medical problems good kid gets good grades doesn't get in trouble is enlarged and medications what are your five differentials so based off of what we just previously gave you and what you see on the monitor what you heard from mom what would be five things you would really write down that um, you think this likely could be and what this does is it helps people um, engage in their thinking in a stepwise fashion so they don't have to gather all their data points and then formulate their 
um, differentials. They can do it dynamically as different data sets coming at them. So here the lab work popped up at them. And all this is happening by just tapping it on the facilitator. And in this case, this is just a screen recording. So I won't spoil this, this goes for three minutes and then she jumps into torsades and it asks what you would do. So that's kind of the end point. This, these things are as easy as swiping down from the top right. You see here in the bottom right corner, that little um, record button, that's how you record. It makes an MP4 in your photo booth. You can edit it however you want, share it, upload it in your LMS, um, social media, um, or just utilize it in this type of setting in a Zoom um, fashion and allow your students to interact with it. It is a great way to trigger discussion uh, in a world where people need to be talking more and getting more involved with each other. So um, here's the example of what it looks like, how you can edit it and then how you share it throughout. So now I'm gonna hit on, um, and hope Katie's still on, I'm gonna hit on virtual simulation, virtual, um, actually running virtual sims. Um, this is just a template we have. If you reach out to us at iSimulate, we can send it to you. It's super simple. Um, the goal being always to start with what are your objectives of that simulation? What are your three objectives? What's your initial presentation? What are your initial vital signs? What are you starting with? And you can add a second set um, if you expect a change to occur or a treatment to occur. So you can add as many as you want, except um, if you, with your expectations, the beauty of our system is it's very easy to turn the dials and hit send on the fly because inevitably what we plan for uh, doesn't necessarily happen. Expected treatments and actions. And then the last, my most favorite is debrief, debriefing points and pictures. So I'm gonna show you some examples here. So um, we have a very fortunate opportunity to work with some companies like EMS World and uh, ENA, the Emergency Nurses Association. So here to the right, you'll see um, bottom right, you'll see the crew running the scenario from Florence, South Carolina. Um, my buddy here, uh, Matt, with the heart behind him, he's the silent evaluator in the background. A uh, gentleman with uh, absolutely no hair is Dr. Chris Sampson from Missouri. There's the legendary Katie O'Connor and myself in the top. And I'll start the play here. So here's the screen being shared. Medic 30 Medical Emergency We give them context, so we give them a dispatch in this essence because that's what they would do on the street. So when you're building these, and this is just a YouTube video we took down. Should we check behind their knees and check their calves? And you hear them in the bottom right corner talking as they're going to the call. Um, and so I'll fast forward it to here we go. They get to the call. Uh, Again, we talk about and they pull up on scene and that gives them the opportunity as the crew to work like they would as the crew. Chris Sampson's the online medical direction. If they need help, we're going to give them that cookie. Otherwise, we're going to condition people in this environment to not actually ask for those resources. And then in the top right corner, I'm playing the patient. Some things to think about when you're doing virtual simulation because they don't have a real person in front of them. Beauty is you can give them the vital signs, you can give them the patient, it enhances their communication skills because that's really what they have to bank on. The caveat is you have to think about things that are pertinent or they would want. So we had to Google a picture of a chest. This person was having um, a dissecting aortic aneurysm. So we had to go on, get a picture of a person with a chest. And all we did was take the exact same background we used up here in our Zoom background to give them that background relatability paste that picture over top of it. And when they were doing a head to toe assessment, we gave them that and they, you'd see the eyeballs go into the screen. They check the patient, say, hey, no trauma findings. Okay, we're good to keep going. So um, let's see, let's click this one. Uh, let mouse go. Uh, lab work, embedding your lab work in there as well. Um, so getting your lab work to jump, if you're going to give them that 12 leads, all of our uh, ECGs uh, have smart 12 lead technology, meaning we give you over 78 different um, rhythms, you pick the rate. And when they push 12 lead on the monitor, it's going to generate a high res 12 lead, like you see here. So 
Um, our system, we have an agreement with Life in the Fast Lane, so you can see the wide media steinum. So when we embedded, uh, you can embed chest x-rays, CAT scans, all that, but you need to give them that for what they're asking for. Um, in terms of, and I'm gonna see if I can get this to work, this is an example of the remote control feature. So I'm here in Virginia, this crew down here in the bottom right, they're in uh, Western Iowa. And the patient is a Lyme disease patient who goes in a high degree block. They have their iPad. So we sent them the software, 30 days of the software so they can use it. And they're actually gonna pace me. They're gonna gain capture by pacing me. This is like me. a big picture of your heart. Looks at different areas of the heart. Based on the floor. switch to. We sent them also meds, so you can get them from 3B. They're the demo meds. Okay, they're going to get you to the hospital real soon. Yeah. So they were dropping a line. They were trying meds. I'm going to be at work tomorrow. No joy. You hear me getting unconscious. My perfusion's going down. So we're going to, what do you want, 0.5? And they had tried to opt for atropine first. Switch here. He starts a line. We've started some fluid running at TKO. And if you notice... The team member right here is actually cycling up the milliamps as he's watching the monitor for capture. Okay, hey, you're going to feel a little bit of a, a shock to your body because your blood rate's too low. And that's why you're being lethargic. You can hear him clicking much. the buttons as I'm he's actually doing it. And if you notice his well. engagement and uh, stress in the moment. Uh, no, he's got too low blood pressure for your cell. Right. I'm going to bump past where he's got it. And you see me start twitching to help enhance that relatability. Okay. All right, but I'm going to give you that 50 of fentanyl to help with the pain of that shocking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got 50 of fentanyl slow. So they got capture and they're controlling it remotely over the internet. So, um, this is the last one I want to show you in terms of a video, and this was from ENA. This is the final one of the finalists, a group from California. And on the last day, um, this team member was actually detailed to a different hospital. So I watch the engagement of the learner in a simulated environment because of all the stressors that have been applied. And again, they have tangible items. They have demo medication, IVs. They have to do it if they want it. So you have three up top, one on the bottom. They, they actually cross check left, which is like right. a okay, pure example of a culture of safety okay perfect so um yeah. we're concerned about the possibility that he's having a, an aneurysm he's having a dissection um right now they're on the phone with uh dr perkinji so we're going to go ahead and start esmolol on him um do you guys agree with that yeah i agree First. i think that'll be great so can we just the pressure. give him a 500 mic per kilo bolus? And did he get his weight? I remember yes, hearing the question. 104.5 kilograms. Perfect. So we'll start with a bolus and then we'll go ahead and start a drip of the Esmolol. So we're going to give you. Crystal, how should I get yes. up? Hold on a second. So she's going to her reference. Really more time what we're giving for the initial and now she's going to uh, lose signal. Mic per kilo bolus. I'm going to get out my medications here. So she's actually doing general, a cross check. We're going to a little bit of medication because um, your blood pressure is a little bit high. So we just want to bring it down just a touch. Yes. Is your pain any better after that morphine? No, whatever the thing under the tongue was. Now I like, now I have pain. Like Where, to my, kind of like to my back. Okay. Okay. Right. So. You know, like when for you the down and just, like do roofing, feels like that. Okay, no worries. We're gonna start this IV medications, so we won't give you any more of that stuff under the tongue. I'd like to have hey, Crystal, you kind of broke up right there, so we did not hear your dose. Can you Ten try milligrams again? per ml, and you're gonna give a loading dose of. To start with a loading you even saw Matt trying roll. to get a picture of that because it was so like uh, goose okay. bumpy when that drip? happened. I'm sorry? The Esmolol. Yeah, you right? broke up, so we didn't hear your entire thing. We heard the loading dose. So could you repeat the mix? And so they went back through and they actually ran through, um, and that, that actually that was the winning team from ENA. Um, so those were some quick examples on a Wednesday afternoon on how you can utilize Reality360 to enhance the virtual education world. Um, 
if you have any questions or need anything, you can either email education at isimulate.com or me directly, chris at isimulate.com. Um, and yeah, feel free to send us any info uh, or uh, questions over to info at isimulate.com as well. They can get you pricing or help you with any of the equipment uh, questions you may or may not have. I don't see any questions except for Katie O'Connor, who's awesome. Yep. All right. Cool. Chris, thank you. Yeah. That was great. That was great. Thank you so much. All right. It's back, back in my court. Um, I'm going to finish with just a quick overview of another um, virtual solution we have, and it's called 3B Smart Anatomy. I've got my uh, trusty heart model with me, and if you'll see up close, there's a QR code. So 3B Smart, 3B got its start, 3B Scientific got its start about 50, 60 years ago, making the finest quality anatomical models used within you know, anatomy labs and colleges, universities, med schools, nursing schools. And about a year ago, we partnered with 3D for Med that has an awesome digital anatomical content platform called Complete Anatomy. And we carved out a subset of that called 3B Smart Anatomy. So now with uh, the purchase of any one of um, our 3B scientific anatomical models, the uh, purchaser gets access to a full year of 3B Smart Anatomy for an unlimited number of students. So in this virtual world we're working in, um, we found great, um, great sponsorship in universities looking to, to share um, you know, this barcode with their students who can then access the, uh, the Complete Anatomy app to get to the content. So I'm gonna just give you a quick, um, quick overview of Complete Anatomy. And if I did this right this time, you're now seeing a Complete Anatomy screen. Manny, am I right? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Only took two times. Looks so good. this is this is the hub. So what would happen is um, a user would scan that QR code uh, on their model, and it would it would download um, access to this app, um, and then this really is kind of the the hub from which you navigate. So 3B Smart Anatomy comes with courses, quizzes, and access to about 117 uh, different models. Again, awesome digital content that allows um, you know, a student to have 24 seven access to uh, anatomical content. So I'm gonna click on courses and that's gonna launch our 3B Smart Anatomy. And I'm gonna click on that and you're gonna see the 23 different lectures that are available. And I'm just gonna click on, you can see the 16% it means I've started it. I'm just gonna click on that. Um, and what this shows me over on the left, um, each one of these areas show there's content in there. And then the um, orange is colored um, little banner down here shows me that there's a quiz. But I'm gonna launch um, this lecture takes a minute to load. Um, Tim, right now we still see the hub. Really? Thanks, Manny. How about now? Yes. Okay. Now cool. we can see the skull. Okay. Um, so you can see just the outstanding digital content of, uh, of the skull. You can click on it, you can move it. Um, you can click on um, the frontal bone and it's gonna show you where that is. Um, you just kind of click through and it's gonna show you um, all the parts of the, of the skull. Just a great, again, uh, a learning, a remote virtual learning solution for uh, um, for students. 
I'm going to click out of this one. And again, I'm just showing you the, the different um, screens that are available. There you go. And here's just a view of gastroenterology and it's just launching right now. And here we are. Again, you have the ability to manipulate the image and then go through the lessons. can see the high quality definition in, uh, in these models. And then you can also um, navigate uh, directly to the models as well. This shows all the models that are available in the digital content that's, uh, that's available on the platform. So again, it comes with uh, the purchase of any one of our 3B scientific uh, models. And again, um, just a great virtual remote learning um, solution for students. So with that, um, I think we've come to the end of our session. I know we're a little early, but um, we hope that this has been um, informative for all the attendees. Again, we. Uh, we appreciate your time uh, and your interest. If you have questions, um, feel free to, if you wanna ask them now or send them through on the, on the chat. This, I understand from Olivia, this will be recorded so and, and sent out to everyone. Manny, any uh, yes, it any will. Sorry, yes, the um, webinar will be recorded and will be posted on the SSIH uh, website. Awesome, awesome. Well, with that, um, thank you all. We appreciate your time. Um, any questions? Please feel free to reach out to uh, to us. And um, thanks again. And once again, thank you to, uh, to all the veterans. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.